Okay, this video is to review some of the problems from exam number one. Okay, so first of all, let's go through the, the multiple uh, choice matching kind of problems that show up in the first part of the exam. Okay, so starting with number one, quantity with only a magnitude, you check the list and you see item V is scalar. Okay, so that's the answer on this one. I think that one's pretty self explanatory. Same thing with number two, <clears throat> the metric prefix for 10 to the minus third, you look that up and you see milli. All right, so I'm expecting you to memorize or at least have on a sheet, you know, memorizing would be better because you're training to be an engineer, but you need to know all the prefixes. Okay, next in Excel, a reference cell that will change when copied or filled, uh, that's relative addressing in Excel. So hopefully you'll remember that one. Okay, this comes from some of the um, Oaks and Leon reading, not knowing all the information, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> not knowing all the information when developing a solution, item X. Okay, so there we have that one. And with Oaks and Leon, yes, you can still use your uh, reading assignments that you did from that, that textbook to, to answer questions on the final or on subsequent exams, okay? So, uh, number five, the tendency of a force to cause rotation about an axis. Uh, I agree there's some ambiguity here. I think N and W, N is um, moment, all right? And W is torque, all right? Both those are valid answers. Uh, later on, you, you could eliminate one of those if, you know, I think the problem said there's only one corresponding term. So you, you could have narrowed it down to just one answer, but you know, we'll, we'll go with it. All right, I give you credit for that. All right, revisiting steps in a process. Again, Oaks and Leon, that is um, iterating, okay? A metric prefix for 10 to the sixth, that's mega, so which is item K. Process for finding a trend line from a set of data. Okay, so a trend line, there's different ways you can do trend lines. There's a linear regression. There's a way of doing an exponential fit, but all these are called regressions because it's a statistical term. You'll, you'll learn more about it as you go through the curriculum, but you should know that name, okay? Finding a trend line is um, called, the, the process of that is regression. Um, number nine, a coordinate system using magnitude and angle. Okay, that's the polar coordinate system. All right, then we get to this, um, you know, this three-part thing that has one sentence. All right, so let me read through that and you'll see, you know, what, what was intended here. I think I was pretty lenient on item 10 because it wasn't really clear. All right, so to calculate A, all right, so I look over here, moment. To calculate a moment, we find the perpendicular distance Okay, so perpendicular here, from the axis of rotation to the line of action. Okay, so that's the definition of a moment, and that was the idea on 10 through 11. All right, next we get to some true-false. Unlike the scientific method, the engineering design process involves making decisions in pursuit of an open-ended solution. That is true. Okay, defining the problem is the third step in the design process. Okay, so the impl implication here is this comes from the Oaks and Leon reading for design. All right, so if you see a, a problem like that, um, refer to your notes about that, and um, you can just look up the order of, of steps that were described there, and you can find that that's false. Okay, the technique for finding a a line of best fit involves making sure the line passes through every data point. Okay, well, so we're referring to a linear regression here. And the points won't line up on a line, so that's the whole, the whole point of regression is you find something that fits most of the data with less error, okay? And so uh, you'll, you'll never have them, you know, if I sketched a picture here, all right, so here's a graph and I have data it's seldom that the data lands right along the line, all right? You're just coming up with 
uh, some fit that that you know minimizes the error um, for the set of data. All right, so that the answer on that one is false. Okay, so now moving on to 16, I do expect you to know what engineering notation is compared to, uh, or especially compared to scientific notation. All right, so I expect you to know both, but engineering notation is the new, the new thing from this course that you may not have seen before. I'm sure you've seen scientific notation before. All right, so notice here, I didn't really pay that much attention to significant digits. I feel like, uh, we've talked about this before, significant digits can be overrated. I think it's important to know, but without having some context of where the number comes from, to me, it's hard to assess what is significant and what's not. So I didn't worry about significant uh, digits when I graded this problem, and I won't on the final exam either, as long as you're reasonable about it. I don't expect, you know, I wouldn't want to see eight decimal points, all right? but you know, you don't have to have it exactly right in terms of significant digits um, moving into the final. All right, so what you do is you enter this on your calculator, and you can calculate this in engineering notation. If you Certain calculators can give you that, so there you are. You got it, all right? But if your calculator won't do that, it might give you the answer in scientific notation. Okay, so what you need to do is use properties of exponentials convert this exponent here to a multiple of three, all right? And so the reason we do that is because this sets it up well for engineering prefixes, all right? 10 to the third, that's kilo, all right? So if this uh, were, you know, measuring grams, and I had 11.2 times 10 to the third grams, I would be able to replace that and say this is 11.2 kilograms, okay? So you get the idea on that. Okay, I'm gonna erase this because that's a hypothetical that wasn't in the problem statement. Okay, same thing with the next part. You do this division, you get a number, all right? You make this turn into, using properties of exponentials, something you've done from high school, make that turn into a power of, or a multiple of three, not a power of three, a multiple of three, all right? And so 10 to the minus six is micro, okay? So there you go. It's really related to engineering notation is also is related to the use of um, SI prefixes. All right, next. Okay, number 17. Uh, this is the last one we'll do with this video, and then we'll pick it up from, from here. All right, but next, one of the things that I want you to be able to do is to easily apply formulas that we've learned in this class. So the formula in this case is kinetic energy. Hopefully that's on your, you know, in your notes, you know, if I'm looking at a truck that's moving at a certain speed and I ask for the kinetic energy, it's one half mv squared, all right? But the thing you need to be able to move forward with and the things I think I saw the most problems on the exam with were you have to use the correct set of units to make this work. And there's a couple of ways you could approach this. You could leave these in English units, okay, and apply the formula and then convert the final result into, you know, clearly I'm wanting SI units here, okay? All the choices have SI units, okay? So somehow I've got to get from English to SI, all right? And so you could go all the calculations in English and then convert one last thing over to SI, um, my preference is to avoid the uh, slug kind of calculation, you know, because if you did this in English, you have to convert pounds mass to slugs, all right? And uh, to me, I just try to, you know, if I need it in uh, metric, I'm going to just go ahead and convert it to metric, okay? So that's what I did here. I converted pound mass into kilograms, and I just used that table that uh, was included with the exam. Okay, same thing with velocity. I know that if I have an SI unit formula, I need mass to be in kilograms, and I need um, velocity to be in meters per second. Okay, so once I know those standard units, I can plug in here and get the answer. So I do these conversions, 
work this out, and then I plug that back into this equation, and I get 8.36 times 10 to the sixth. All right, so here I use this. I know that's meg, capital M. Okay, so megajoules, 8.4 megajoules is the answer on number 17. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, don't just, you know, when you're going through this, don't just know how to do this one problem. Think about the general concept I'm trying to cover here. So the general concept on this one was convert a formula using the appropriate unit conversion. So you have to know what are the standard units that you put into a formula for the English system or for the metric system, okay? So on English, you know, this the mass would be in slugs, all right, and the velocity would be in feet per second, all right? So if I'd given you this in miles per hour, you would have had to convert miles per hour to feet per second to use the English version of this formula. All right, so think about that, and you know, you're trying to become a better engineer, so you're using these ideas and trying to bring those you know, deep into your psyche where you, you know what to do moving forward.